Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and I'm here today to talk about Adobe Photoshop CS2, also known as Photoshop 9. It's okay to be confused, apparently the folks over at Adobe are as well. But Photoshop CS2 is the latest version of Photoshop, and it offers several new features targeted towards video pros, as well as all-around enhancements that will make working in Photoshop easier and more powerful. Let's take a look at some of the new features. Photoshop CS2 has made several changes, both cosmetic and hardcore underlying technology. First, I'd like to take a look at some of the preferences. Preferences are how you set Photoshop up to work, and the way that you set your preferences will greatly impact how useful Photoshop is to you. So let's go ahead and call up our Preferences menu. We choose Photoshop, Preferences, General. The shortcut for that is Command-K or Control-K. Now, there are several new features here in Photoshop CS2. First off, we're just going to run quickly through all the preference menus. I'm not going to touch on each preference, only those that are new or offer significant improvement. Be sure that you're using the Adobe Color Picker. This will give you the same color picker throughout all Adobe applications, whether you're working on a Mac or a PC. You'll want to use Bicubic Image Interpolation because this will offer the best most all-around image interpolation method for scaling. Here's a new change, UI font size. This one's great. It allows us to go ahead and change the Photoshop menu size for how fonts are displayed for menus and the user interface. For example, we can pick medium. Now it tells us we need to quit and relaunch Photoshop in order to see this change. Let's do that quickly. As monitors get higher and higher resolution, and maybe your eyesight gets a little bit worse from editing at too many late nights, being able to change the user interface size cuts down on having to squint. It's also helpful if you have a client sitting over your shoulder to make the type a little bit larger on the screen. Now, I've set the user interface to a large point size. This is primarily because we're shooting a training video, and I want it to be easier for you to see what's on the screen you should choose either medium, small, or large, depending upon your eyesight and what you need, how high res your monitor is. Now, here's one that most people miss, history states. This is the number of undos you have. If you're new and you're trying out new features, don't be afraid to bump up the history states a little bit. All it does is use up RAM. So if you don't have a lot of RAM, then you need to keep that number down but you do video graphics and run video applications, chances are your computer has a lot of RAM. Take advantage of it. Now, we have a few other options, and we'll see these as we start to customize Photoshop a bit more. Photoshop CS2 now offers the ability to add color coding to the menus. This is a way to call out certain features to make it easier for you to discover maybe new menu items or to flag menu items that you use frequently. The next option, resize image during paste or place, is also nice. For example, if you have a high resolution logo and you place it into your video resolution document, it will automatically scale the image down to fit the screen. This will cut down on how much time you have to spend dragging corners and resizing an image. Personally, I always get rid of the shift key for tool switch. I've been using Photoshop for a long time, and when I tap M for Marquee, I want to be able to quickly cycle to the next Marquee tool. I know my keyboard shortcuts, and to me, a keyboard shortcut involves one key, or two keys. The fewer, the better. So let's get rid of the Shift key option. Photoshop CS2 comes with a new file browser. It's called Bridge, and it works through all Adobe applications. It's a good idea to go ahead and tell Bridge to automatically launch when you launch Photoshop. This way, it's ready when you hit Browse. Another new feature is support for scroll wheel mice. This allows you to do zooming. So if you use the scroll wheel up or down, you can zoom in or out of your image. This is a very useful way to quickly get at the pixels you want to work with. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. We're in our file handling area. Not much has changed here. However, I do want to remind you, be sure to always save image previews. This way, you quickly get a thumbnail when you're browsing at the desktop level. 
You also always want to append your file extension. A file extension is the two or three letter code that comes at the end of a file that tells the computer how to handle that file. File extensions greatly cut down on confusion when moving graphics from one application to another. One other method you might want to do is to be sure to maximize file compatibility. I'm going to go ahead and always maximize file compatibility. This means that when you give the Photoshop file to someone using an older version of Photoshop, they're more likely to be able to open up the file without problems. Keep in mind, certain features that are only available in Photoshop CS2 won't be available in older versions of Photoshop. But changing the Maximize PSD file compatibility to Always ensures that your file will be more likely to be opened by another version of Photoshop. I click Next. Now, we have some dynamic changes here to how we can see our working cursors. First off, we've always been able to see the paintbrush cursor as a paintbrush, but we now can actually see a full-size brush that is identical to the size of the brush you're painting with. This is an easier way to see what's going to happen before you click. By being able to see your paintbrush, you know approximately when you click how big the stroke is going to be. However, we also have the ability to show the crosshair inside of the brush tip, and this makes it more accurate when we paint. Likewise, there's no reason to see most tools as a cute icon. When we've chosen the eyedropper tool, you're going to know that that's the tool you selected. Instead of seeing a cute icon, it's much more useful to see a precise target crosshair. This way you know what color is going to be sampled when you click. Lastly, just a reminder, don't view your channels in color. For the same reason that a DP prefers to look at a grayscale monitor to see detail, you want to view your channels in grayscale images. There's no reason to look at your channels in color. Channels combine to form color and you can better see the detail by viewing it in grayscale.